Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel, All Things Presh. Today I'm going to be talking about the PCAT. So, for those of you who don't know, the PCAT stands for the Pharmacy College Admissions Test. So if you're thinking about applying to pharmacy school, a PCAT is, the PCAT is an exam that you're going to have to take unless you applied in the middle of a global pandemic like I did. And in my case, the PCAT ended up actually being waived, but I still ended up taking the PCAT. So the first thing to note, I think it's really important to make sure that you've taken enough classes so that you're prepared to take the PCAT. So for example, you want to make sure you've taken classes like Gen Chem, O Chem, maybe at least one of the physio classes, and you definitely want to have gotten all your math out of the way because there is a bit of algebra and calculus on the PCAT exam. And also in terms of biology, you want to make sure you've at least taken microbiology and molecular and cell cellular biology. So another thing to note is that the PCAT is a Pearson exam. So in order to take the PCAT, you're going to have to go to a Pearson testing location site and that exam is actually and the Pearson testing center is heavily prompted. So they will be taking your fingerprints. You're going to have to present at least two different forms of ID and you are being monitored very closely so those are just also things to keep in mind in order so you're not caught off guard or anything when you get to the testing location. So I think when you're preparing for the PCAT exam it's really important to get in the mood and atmosphere of the exam so when you're practicing for the exam obviously don't have your phone with you or anything. Try not to have any other technology around you, I think it's just really important to get into the mood and atmosphere of the exam. So something to note is that the PCAT does have five sections. The first section is the writing section, which is then followed by the biological processes section, and then there's a chemical processes section. After that, you're going to get a 15 minute break. and then. Once you get back from the 15 minute break, it will be followed by the reading section and the quantitative reasoning section, which is math. So for the writing section of the PCAT, you only get 30 minutes for that portion, which includes prep time and writing the actual prompt. So I think it's really important to practice for the writing section of the exam. I personally didn't spend too much time preparing for the writing section because I was naturally kind of just a strong writer. So I think when you're preparing for the writing section, like try and plan out your five paragraphs like intro, body, body, and conclusion. And I think it's something to note in general when you're writing for the PCAT or your interview, the essay section for your interview, a common theme that I usually try and do while I'm writing or preparing for any writing, th any anything writing related in terms of pharmacy, I usually try and tie my theme back to educating the public. So for example, for my prompt, I would usually try and tie my prompt back to, I think it's important to implement this strategy by educating the public or groups or whatever the population is for the prompt that you're giving. And then for the writing section, I think I just looked up prompts online or I used the Kaplan or Dr. Collins and then for the writing section yeah I was able to get away with that. I think on the actual exam I think it was based out of six and I think I got a five on the scale so I ended up doing really good on the writing pro section. The next section on the PCAT is going to be the biology section. So what I mainly used to study for biology on the PCAT was Dr. Collins and Kaplan, and I'll show you the Kaplan prep book that I used to prepare. When I took the PCAT, I took the PCAT, I actually took the PCAT twice. I took it in 2019 and 2020. So this is what the PCAT prep book looks like, and it gives, I think, for, for the biology section of the PCAT, I think it's really important to use Kaplan. I preferred using Kaplan over Dr. Collins for the PCAT just because they've changed the structure of the PCAT so that the biology section is more it's more application based so for example you'll get a mini prompts that's two three or four paragraphs it's somewhere along that lines and you'll have something that you have to apply so it's not just as simple as oh what part of the brain is this or what chromosome is this it's more so like you have to read information and apply 
biological theories to that so you really have to understand and have a really strong background in biology to do well on the PCAT so I would really recommend using Kaplan and if you do use Dr. Collins I think it's really important to know that note that some of the questions on Dr. Collins are similar to the exam the only issue I had with using Dr. Collins for the biology section of the PCAT was that the questions on Dr. Collins were like I said before it was more so the short many multiple choice questions and it wasn't really de it wasn't really like deep application based questions it was just more so it was more dense and I think Kaplan definitely gives you a stronger foundation of biology for the PCAP for the organ for the organic chemistry portion of the PCAP a lot of questions that I did on Dr. Collins are really similar to the actual exam and I think something to really note for them when you see OCHEM questions on the PCAT, the, the OCHEM related questions aren't really difficult, it's just more, to me I felt like they were more STEM to see if you were paying attention. For example, like, there will be questions that like, they have a carbon chain and there'll be like, five carbons, there'll be like five carbons on the molecule and obviously you can't have five carbons on a molecule so it's really a lot of stuff like that just making sure you know your octet rules and seeing if you're paying attention but I think Dr. Collins did a really good job of gauging and preparing my readiness for the PCAT for the chemistry section of the PCAT so after the chemistry portion you're gonna have a short break and then when you come back you're gonna do the reading section for the reading section of the PCAT, I think it's really important to not underestimate the reading section of the PCAT because I will be the first person to say that the reading section was by far my lowest section of the exam. And if you talk to a lot of other people, they will say the same thing. Do not underestimate that reading section of the PCAT. You will be hit with a rude awakening if you do not study for the reading section. So in order to prepare for the reading, I think you can also use Kaplan once again, and then you can also use Dr. Collins. I think both of those give you a good gauge of reading. And just so you know, for the reading section, you're not really going to have any like biology paragraph questions. It's just straight up reading, but I will say that the reading section is a bit challenging, so it's definitely important to still put in effort and time towards studying for the reading section of the PCAT. And then the last section that you're going to have is the math, well, qualitative reasoning. So for me, I had naturally always been good at math, so I didn't have to put in as much time towards studying for the math, math section of the PCAT. I think for me, I think I spent a good like two to three months of consistently studying, and of those two to three months, I probably only spent a good one or two weeks just completely dedicated to math because math always just naturally came a lot easier for me. So. To study for the math section, I once again use Dr. Collins. I think Kaplan is helpful too, but I personally just preferred using Dr. Collins to study for the math section of the PCAT. And then with the math, I will say there is a lot of algebra. You'll be hit with a few calculus-based questions, and then there is quite a bit of probability too, so it's definitely important to make sure that you've taken your college algebra and and calculus in order to study for the PCAT. Also something else that's really important to note for the PCAT is um, I know when you register it says to get there like 15 to 30 minutes early but say your PCAT exam is at 8 a.m. in the morning and you get to the Pearson location at 7.15 if you're the first person in line when you go into the Pearson Center and there's no one else ahead of you and you walk in at 7.15 um, once they take your fingerprint and stuff, like you're actually going to end up heading into the exam like 45 minutes or at 7.15 or whatever time you get there. So I think it's really important to know and that was something that nobody told me that once you arrive at the site and you check in and you get ready to and you're ready to start the exam, like if you get there early, you're going to end up taking the exam early. So that's just also something else to keep in the back of your head. And my last tip for the PCAT is um, about, 
I would say a good rule of thumb is maybe about two to three weeks before you you're ready to take the exam to purchase the Pearson practice exam from the actual Pearson company because I think that exam gives you a really really good gauge of how you'll actually do on the PCAT. So for me, I purchased the Pearson exam a week and a half before I took the actual PCAT. I bought the two packs of so the first the first test that I did, it was just more so like to gauge my knowledge and see where I was at. So then, it will actually tell you what sections you need to work on. Like for example, if you didn't do as well on the biological processes section, then you can actually go, it will actually tell you like, oh, you need to work on your microbiology or you need to work on your physiology and it'll give you like a good understanding and it actually like, it tells you what you got wrong and it gives you a description of why you got that wrong so it gives you a better gauge of your foundation of that section and what else you need to work on and then so yeah the reason I recommend getting the two pack is because the first one there are two different exams so the second time you take it you're not gonna buy you're not gonna take the exact same exam it will be the same level of difficulty but you will get another set of questions that are pretty similar to the PCAT so I think that's just really good practice too and I also think that the level of difficulty and the types of questions that are on the Pearson practice exam they're really really like they're very very similar to what you'll see on the PCAT and I also think for me how you end up doing on the Pearson practice exam is most likely how you'll end up doing on the actual PCAT exam so for me I can say the ranges that I scored on the Pearson practice exam, that's pretty much exactly how I ended up doing on the PCAT. And then another question that I get asked a lot is, when you purchase this book, it actually comes with two full-length practice exams. A lot of people start stressing out about the exam because they do significantly lower on the Kaplan practice portion than they then just I think it's important to note that Kaplan does make their PCAT practice exams a little bit more challenging. So if you take a Kaplan practice exam and you do significantly poor or you don't get a score that you're necessarily happy with, do not freak out. Kaplan just Kaplan exams are just naturally harder and they do they really do a good job of challenging you um, in terms of the material that you need to know for the PCAT. So I think my rule of thumb is to just practice Purchase, I think my rule of thumb is to just purchase a Pearson, the, the Pearson based practice exam so that you can take that exam as practice for the PCAT and it will give you a pretty good gauge of how you're going to do on the actual PCAT exam. And that's it for today's video. If you have any more questions that come up about the PCAT, as always, you can message me. You can email me at askpressy at gmail.com or you can message me on Instagram. I usually do a good job of responding to people and yeah if you just have any more questions always feel free to contact me and thanks for watching this video.